Over 21 million British people are now wasting their money in premium bonds. In this video, I'm going to explain eight reasons why premium bonds have essentially become obsolete and are now a dying investment product. My name is Jay Barrett. I'm a former investment banker, bond trader, and now entrepreneur. And I'm here to help you improve your business and financial game. Yeah, when I blow up, I'm a sore high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living out my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole risk covered up in ice. Dealership, never ask the price. I hit the molly ball with my dogs. Yeah, I swipe it once without thinking twice. So before we can understand why premium bonds are doomed, it helps to first understand how exactly they work. If you already know this, skip to the next section in the chapters below. Premium bonds are a savings product run by National Savings and Investments, which you can think of as a government savings-only bank backed with a 100% guarantee from Her Majesty's Treasury. Now, jumping on the NSI website, you can see that each premium bond costs £1 to buy with a minimum investment of £25 and a maximum of £50,000. Now, the rewards for this work similar to a lottery monthly prize draw system with a range of rewards from £25 up to £1 million. There's a random number generator called Ernie which creates random numbers and then matches those numbers to the numbers on each of the premium bonds in order to allocate those different tiers of rewards. Now, NSI actually publish the historical winners and all the payouts that they've done and using this data it's actually possible to calculate the probability and expected return for each of the rewards now martin lewis over at money saving expert has already done the maths on this and has a good example from june 22 so you can see here all the different tiers of the rewards for example that £25 is paid out to over 4 million people and has a chance of winning of roughly uh, 1 in 24,500. And obviously, as you go up the tiers of rewards, um, less people receive those and the probability goes down of winning each one. Now, using the probability of all these different rewards and some very advanced maths, you can actually convert this expected or estimated winnings into an equivalent prize rate, or if you like, interest rate. Now, NS and I actually state that the estimated annual prize rate is currently up to 1.4%. However, this rate does depend on the total amount that you invest in premium bonds. So, for example, um, with that mathematical analysis, the guys at Money Supermarket were able to estimate the likely prize rate for different amounts you'd put in. So if you had, say, as low as £1,000 in premium bonds, you're actually likely to get close to zero in terms of a return. Whereas if you put in, say, 39000 you'd get more like 1.3%, which is closer to that maximum 1.4% prize rate. Although few people actually reach the full 1.4% prize rate. So in a nutshell, that's how the product works. So now we understand how premium bonds work, we can get into the eight reasons why I think they are a waste of time. And the first reason is that savings accounts simply offer better returns. Jumping onto the computer, let's look at this Virgin Money M Plus account, which is currently offering an interest rate of 1.56% on any balances up to £25,000. You've also got the Chase Saver account, and they're offering 1.5% uh, AER, and that's on balances up to £250,000. Also, these are easy access accounts, so they're more convenient and flexible than the monthly prize draw system with premium bonds. And on top of that, the rates on these accounts are guaranteed. Unlike with premium bonds, there's no guarantee that you'll actually even hit that 1.4% prize rate. On top of that, you can also look at other types of savings accounts like fixed rate options where you lock away your money for, say, one or two years. And a lot of these accounts are paying around 2 to 2.5%. 2 
And then after that, you've also got regular savers um, looking at uh, First Direct. Their regular saver account is offering a 3.5% return. Got NatWest. Similarly, that's pretty good. They're offering 3.25%. Or um, RBS, they're also offering 3.25%. So that's way in excess of that 1.4% on the premium bonds. So, you know, it's hard to compete with that. And then on top of this, there may also be better options for you in your overall investment strategy, such as it may be better to pay down some of your mortgage or possibly look at other higher yielding assets such as ETFs or possibly some crypto. The next problem with premium bonds is that to hit that 1.4% prize rate, you need a large deposit, ideally close to that maximum £50,000. Whereas with most of these easy access savings accounts, you can open them with a deposit of as little as £1. The third problem with premium bonds is that the tax benefit they used to have has become redundant. Now, what this means is because premium bonds are paid as a reward or like a prize, in the UK, they're exempt from tax. Unlike in the past for savings accounts, any interest earned used to be taxed. However, since the personal savings allowance was introduced in 2016, for most people, any interest you'd earn in a savings account, you can earn that tax-free. If you want to understand exactly how this works, see my other video on cash ices up there where I give a detailed example. Anyway, so the upshot of this means that premium bonds now have no advantage from a tax perspective for at least 95% of people. So it just can't really compete on that aspect either anymore. The fourth problem with premium bonds is that they're no more safe than a savings account because all savings accounts operated by UK regulated financial firms are protected for any deposits up to £85,000 in that account. Now, NSNI say that you can put as much as you want in premium bonds and it's 100% guaranteed because it's backed by Her Majesty's Treasury. Now, that's great, but... You can only put a maximum of £50,000 into premium bonds and that's actually below the 85000 that's guaranteed for any money that you put into a savings account. So therefore, putting your money in either place basically has zero risk and premium bonds are no safer than savings accounts. The next problem with premium bonds is the psychological aspect. And I think NS and I play on this rather because people enjoy the kick of winning those £25 or £50 from time to time. But often they'll just forget about all the other months where they don't win anything. And most people aren't going to take the time to map out all the historical months and how much they won and when they didn't win, average that out over the year and work out a true rate of return. Uh, whereas with savings accounts, obviously the money just sits in there. You don't have to do anything. And it can be rather mundane just accruing uh, this interest amount over time. However, as I've shown, often that can actually end up being a lot more. The second aspect is this potential where people think, I might actually win the £1 million, so I better be in it to win it. However, jumping back to that analysis of the probabilities by Martin Lewis, they've actually compared this to the probability of winning the national lottery. And if you do all the stats, then they're saying there's about a 1 in 45 million chance of winning the national lottery jackpot, whereas there's more than a 1 in 59 billion chance of trying to win that 1 million top prize in the premium bonds. So even compared to a lottery system like the National Lottery, it can't even compete with that either. The next issue with premium bonds, and possibly the biggest problem here, is inflation. Now, I'll illustrate this with a quick example. Imagine we were going to buy a laptop with a ticket price of £1,000. Well, today, at year zero, 
That £1,000, if we assume a 0% inflation rate, in one year's time, obviously that price will not change and the price at the end of year one would still be £1,000. However, according to the Office for National Statistics, the inflation rate is now at 9%, the highest the UK has had in 40 years. Link again to my Cash ISA video where I do a deep dive into this. Anyway, coming back to the laptop, if inflation is at 9%, in one year's time, that £1,000 will go up to £1,090. Now, obviously, that's a problem because if you just kept your £1,000 in a box under the mattress, it will stay at the same amount. And in one year's time, you can't buy that laptop anymore because the price of 1090 is obviously greater than the 1000 pounds you have in your hand so relatively speaking that 1000 pounds is now worth nine percent less than it was at the beginning of this time period at year zero now we can apply the same idea to the premium bonds so imagine we put 1000 pounds into the premium bonds well due to inflation 9% of that, they would go down in value, relatively speaking, by £90. However, the premium bonds do earn a return. And let's assume that you're lucky and you gain that maximum 1.4% prize rate. So that means that in, a, in one year, the premium bonds would go up in value by 1.4%, which is £14. Well, if you net these two off against each other, obviously that's negative, that's positive. So you'd end up with minus 76 pounds. So from your thousand pounds that you started off with, that's obviously going to go down overall in value. And you'd actually end up with 924 pounds. Not great. So yes, even though you are earning that 1.4%, you can't forget while you've got this money locked away in the premium bonds for a year, you're losing such a large amount in inflation. The next issue is the cash rule. And this is the generally accepted rule that you need around about three to six months worth of cash to cover any emergency expenses. Now, for the average UK income of approximately £2,000, Six months worth of this would work out at roughly £12,000. Now, if you've already got that sitting in a savings account, there's not really any need to hold additional cash also in premium bonds. And the second point is that, at least with the savings accounts, especially the instant access ones, you can get that money whenever you need it. And if you are in an emergency, you want to be able to get at it as soon as possible, ideally without incurring any penalties. Whereas... Due to the way premium bonds are designed with this sort of monthly prize draw, often people will deposit far more than that £12,000 to try to guarantee getting close to that 1.4 prize rate, you know, putting in 30, 40, 50,000 pounds, which is far more than most households would need for those emergencies. And also, when they do want to pull out the money, let's say it's right at the beginning of the month, they'd lose the returns from that whole month due to the way the prizes are drawn on this monthly cycle. So it's kind of a double whammy why the way the premium bonds are set up don't work so well as this emergency cash pot to draw on when you need it. Lastly, the eighth and final reason why I think premium bonds are becoming obsolete is that Having used them, the overall experience is just extremely clunky and feels very out of date. For example, even just to open an account with them takes 7 to 10 working days, whereas some of the challenger banks like, say, Revolu, for example, you can open a full bank account in the matter of minutes online. So jumping onto the computer, if you look at the App Store, NS and I do actually have an app you can use for your account, but the app is extremely limited. And really, all you can do is just check the prizes. Uh, that's it. 
And and this is reflected in really poor reviews of the app, like 2.3 stars out of five, and quite a lot of negative comments about you know how limited it is and it's not very user friendly. Also, in terms of actually claiming the prizes when you do win on the premium bonds, I mean, they do have your bank account details. And if you win very small amounts, it gets paid into your account automatically. But if you look at the small print, any prizes over £5,000 or more, they actually won't pay you it automatically. They'll first send you a form in the post that you have to fill out. I mean, God knows how long that takes. Or maybe if you've moved a dress and you miss it, you know. And then if you win the jackpot, though, you've got to wait for someone to actually come out to your house and visit you in person. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, and actually... I have a slight conspiracy theory that these things have not been made easy almost so that they limit how much of the prize is just paid out to everyone automatically. And that's reflected. They even say it on their own website. Up to, I think it was this year, there are prizes now historically worth over £73 million, which remain unclaimed. Now, if they just paid this money out automatically to all the participants, I would imagine that figure would be a much, much smaller amount than that. So I don't really understand why they're making it just so difficult. And I think on a more high level, there's probably going to be other challenger companies like, you know, Revolut, Monzo, these small startups and players who could come up with a system like this with a better rate, much better experience and possibly, you know, make these guys obsolete. So in conclusion, are premium bonds worth it? Probably not. There may be some very unusual cases where it could work. If, for example, you were a top rate taxpayer, you had massive cash deposits and you just enjoy a bit of a gamble, then there may be the possibility you could earn slightly better than savings accounts if you got lucky with the payouts. And I guess you do have that very, very infinitesimally small chance of winning that 1 million jackpot. Although personally, I think you're better just playing the normal lottery if that's your gig. Um, But for most people, I think, no, unless NS and I update this product make the prize rate more competitive, make the user experience much better, and and ideally try and make this work for people who are trying to find a way to at least get close to beating inflation. Then maybe it could become attractive again. But for me, this one's a no. So that's it for the video. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Martin Lewis from Money Saving Expert. He's written a brilliant article on the premium bonds topic, which really delves even further into the mechanics and mathematics behind how all of this works. I've linked the article in the description if you're interested to read more. Other than that, if you've gotten value out of this video and you'd like to hear more about my business savings and investment tips, then smash that subscribe button down below and help support me while I'm growing the channel. Also, drop me a like and ask away in the comments. I'm happy to help. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. All this money